Hello there, you amazing viewers and subscribers, and welcome to a brand new Doctor Who related video for today. So, to carry on with my series of ranking every single season of Doctor Who, it's time to talk about 35th place. So, if you haven't seen the other episodes, I do go and highly recommend, because I have done 39, 38, 37 and 36. So, it's time to dive into my 35th season. That is... The how I've ranked every single season of Doctor Who, from Classic Who all the way up to Modern Who. I've added them all together and I've ranked them from my least favourite down to my all-time favourites. So, jumping in 35th place is, of course, season 16, which was broadcast from 1978 to 1979. And it is the second season to have... Well, basically, it's the first season to have Romana, but played by Mary Tam. The Doctor's got to search for the key to time. And this is the, for me, to actually sit here and say this, it's definitely one of the weak seasons for Tom Baker's Doctor. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's still got some good stories in it, like the Pirate Planet, the Stones of Blood, and of course the Armageddon Factor. But you've got some stories in there, like the Power of Kroll, the Androids of Tara, and of course you have the Reboss Operation. Which is not one I do seriously enjoy. I'm sorry to say this to anybody that loves season 16. It's not my favourite Tom Baker season. Now, Tom Baker is, of course, my favourite Doctor. I just cannot... I do like season 16 a little bit. Because I rewatched it um, last year. And I was doing little reviews for it. And I think I stopped after the Stones of Blood. Because I watched Armageddon Factor. No, sorry. I watched the... I watched the other three stories after those three. I haven't really done a review on them because by the point I get to the Armageddon Factor, I just basically zoom out of this story. The only other thing about it is where you've got the Doctor going around with the stick thing trying to find the segments to the key to time so he can resemble them all into one. <sighs> now, for me to sit here and say uh, Tom Baker's favourite Doctor, but this is definitely my least favourite Tom Baker season. After, uh, if I was going to rank all the Tom Baker seasons, you know it will probably be season 13, 12, 14, 17, 15, and then, of course, 18, and then 16. That's where I rank the Tom Baker seasons. I literally go from 13, 14, 15, which are the three best seasons for Tom Baker. Then you go to season, seven to, uh, season 15, which has got some good stories in it and some bad stories in it. Season 17, I pretty much enjoy. Season 18, I love a lot more than season 16. But it's still pretty much of a good season. I own it on VHS twice and, of course, on DVD twice. But I have to sit here and say, it's not one that I really consider going back to rewatching quite a lot. Out of the Tom Baker run, I mainly, I really go back and rewatch these first four seasons, which is seasons 12, 13, 14, and 15, because I do go back and rewatch 15. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15 a lot more than I do watch season 16, 17 and 18. I have to say, I do watch them for a lot more for Tom's run than any other Doctor. I just do not enjoy season 16 much. So I'm going to talk about some of the stories and what I find so boring about them and stuff. So jumping into the very first story of the season, it's known as the Reboss Operation. And I just get so bored in it. I don't... I, I know some people like it. I've been talking to a few people and they're like, oh, give it another chance. But I've watched it so many times now over the last couple of years since I first bought the box set back in 2013. And I sat down and I was like watching it and watching it all for the, from 2013 upwards. And I couldn't get into it. I really couldn't. Uh, the, the only good thing about it, I have to say, is the alien the kind of like monster thing that they've got in the pit protecting the crown joys, crown jewels. I really think that's a good design and stuff. I do like Tom Baker and Mary Tam. Look, can I just call you Romana? No, my name is Romana Lang of And he goes, by the time I shot all that out, you you could you could be dead. I'm just gonna call you Romana for short, but I don't know. Romana. Look, it's either Romana or Fred. Alright then, call me Fred. Right, that's settled. Come on, Romana. I do like Tom Baker and Mary Tam's kind of friendship in this one. I love the fact when you've got the Doctor again, K Lang, and the Doctor goes, that's the new assistant. And then when she tells the Doctor she's put a hole in the Times console to put the stick in to help locate the kid's time, and he goes, you cannot go around putting holes in the old girl. And he's, there, and he's like there, and <laughs> talking to the TARDIS, and he's like, what's the nice lady done to you? I do enjoy Tom Baker and Liana. Now, there's a bit of a story with this one, because 
During the filming between the Invasion of Time and this story, Tom Baker was actually bitten by a Jack Russell. So for, for the first half of the season, you do see him with a bit of a bite mark on his lip where he got actually got bitten by a Jack Russell. But then when you get into the rest of the story, you got the tile. I, like, I like the way the tiles look in season 16, the whole police box bit. It's like very, very chunky and a bit fat fat at the bottom, but I pretty much enjoy it. Look, look at it. I like the console room. The rest of the story, I just cannot really get connected into it. I just zoom out. I only focus on Tom Baker, really, because Tom Baker is one of the best doctors out there, and he will always will be. So the next story is basically the pirate planet. Now, this is my favourite story of this season. I love the fact we have this kind of planet that can jump in time, really, and it creates like a time distortion. The tire just bounces off the planet Cal Califax, and he's there talking to the captain, and the captain's there showing him, and the doctor goes, ah, and then he really pushes like the tracer across the like cabinet of um, Coniflax, and it turns out the whole planet was actually part of the key to tie. So I really do enjoy this story. I, like, I do like the captain. I really think the captain's an interesting one. The kind of like mind people when they kind of knock the doctor flying in his hair going like that. And then goes, nah. I do enjoy that. I like the fact Romana's good in this one as well. And then when she takes the doctor's jelly babies and the doctor goes, where'd you get those jelly babies from? From your pocket. He goes, what? <laughs> he literally just goes, that's great, Tom Baker's stuff. What? With his bump in his pocket. I do enjoy season. I do enjoy the Pirate Planet. I really do love it. It's just a great one. I like Mr. Fillory. I really think he's an interesting character. Very, very weakish when he's there, like, grubbling to the Pirate Captain at one point. I just really do enjoy, enjoy it. Uh, the next episode is known as The Stones of Blood. Again, this was my very first. I actually remember owning this on VHS because we went up to Welsh Pool with my granddad, went into a market and they actually had. One Doctor Who VHS, which was actually the Stones of Blood. And I've managed to keep it for so long. And I remember going back to my nan and granddad's. Because my mum and dad was out with me nan and granddad. Um, out with the family. I think they were at a club somewhere with... Um, met up with some of the family. But this is I'm going back a load of years ago. And my nan and granddad was babysitting me and my brother. So my granddad had the VHS to play tape. I actually remember sitting down watching this story with him, and he enjoyed it a lot more than I did. I, when I first watched it, I was like, eh, it's not really that good, is it? And my granddad's like, I actually kind of enjoyed this one. I do like this one. It's a shame that we haven't, you haven't got the rest of the story to carry on with this story. Because from he will, granddad used to speak to me a lot about Doctor Who, because he used to watch it. He was in the Navy when it first started in 1963, he, he was telling me. And he says he remembers coming out of the Navy, and he was watching it all the way upwards. And he used to deliver some of the props um, for the for the John Poe era when they actually were filming in Ebersham in Birmingham back back in 1970 well, back in 1969 up to 1974 something like that where they were filming all the unit stories and stuff. And he remembers taking all the Doctor Who props to deliver them to the BBC. He was telling me he, I remember him telling me all the times he saw Daleks and. Um, he saw a sea devil at one point and everything. He, uh, he remembers, even he, he actually did remember. And he used to tell me what, when he just sat down and watched the story, he used to go to my dad. I, not my dad, sorry. Um, I can't remember who he said it was. It was either my dad or my uncle Matt or was it Auntie Lizzie? I can't remember which one it was, but he says he remembers like delivering all the parts to these stories. So anyway, I was, I was going a bit off topic then as well. Um, the next story, which is the Androids of Tara. How can I say this one? Boring. Boring, 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 boring. I watch it. I do like some aspects of it. I like the fact you've got a whole planet of androids. I like the fact you got one android like Mary Towns playing a version of an android of Romana trying to trick the Doctor. I love the fact that the Doctor's there with K9. He goes, can you repair an android? What, what did you say? I do enjoy that random stuff. But the rest of the episode, I just... Don't really connect to anything with it. Um, the Power of Kroll. Now, I know another sci-fi guy does enjoy Power of Kroll. But for me to sit here and say, I pretty much do enjoy Power of Kroll, really. I think it's a good one. Not as great as the first two, as I mentioned, like the Pirate Planet and the Stones of Blood. And, of course, the Armageddon Factor. But I do pretty much like it. I love the fact that the big, massive squidge, squidgel creature is actually a, a segment of the key to time. And it grew into this big, massive 
octopus thing and when it attacks through the kind of wall bases and stuff the only thing about this one i don't really enjoy is the people that's all been painted green with the skirt things and going like the, the stupid dancing where they're, like, they're going crawl crawl i really don't like that it's like i don't know what the hell they were thinking for it the script the script is good but it's the way it's been directed the script because i actually got the target novel book of the story and the target novel book is that actually is a lot better than what we actually got on screen sorry that we got on screen i have to say that personally i really do, do think the target novel book is a lot better than what we got on screen for it but it's very average. It's a good story. Not as much, but it does lack certain aspects of it that could have been a great story. So jumping into the next story now, it is known as the Armageddon Factor, where the Doctors fight against the Black Guardian agent known as the Shadow. And of course, we meet the doc one of the another Time Lord in this, known as Drax. And I love the Doctor and Drax's chemistry is really, really good. I like the way they just keep battling with each other and everything. I do enjoy. This story, and then when the doctor literally make, creates a fake segment of the kids' time to try and help people like stay inside a uh, quantum time loop by using the key, and then of course the black guardian threatens the doctor, and the doctor goes, "You think I would know the difference between the white and the black guardian?" So yeah, that's the whole point of the key to time, really. That's some of the stories. Now the key to time is basically about the white guardian wants to stop the black guardian from getting the hands his hands on the key to time. Because the Black Guardian is the evil Guardian. He does try and kill the Doctor in his next incarnation. Which is going to be for another topic when I talk about Season 20. I pretty much do like the Black Guardian. I think I really think it's like the same actor from the final episode of The Armageddon Factor. And I think it's the same actor who plays him in the Black Guardian. Really. I could be totally different. But they do sound the same. The White Guardian is played by two different people. But the one that plays him at the beginning of the story. With the beard and the hat and stuff. He's telling the Doctor. I love the fact when the Doctor goes, look, can I just take K-9? It's very, it's very good. No, Doctor, you've got to take somebody with you. And the Doctor just goes, like that. I do enjoy that bit of the this season. The kind of whole story arc of it is a bit like Trial of the Time Lord and a bit like Doctor Who Flux. But I have to say, this out of Doctor, Doctor Who Flux is a lot better than The Key to Time. And Trial of the Time Lord, I do enjoy a lot more than The Key to Time as well. So, yeah, in 35th place, it is the key to time season, season 16. Let me know in the comments what you think of this season. Is it one of your favourites? Let me know. Thank you for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share and join me for more Doctor Who awesomeness content. Have a great day.